This is the AGM MP40. Hey, it's Airsoft Mike and I'm back again with yet another episode where I show you Airsoft replicas of weapons used in the Call of Duty World War II video game. And of course, it's all based on real steel weapons as used historically during World War II. It's the turn of the AGM MP40. Let's see what we get in the box. Okay, so we get a full-size instruction manual. Not bad, it does go into quite a bit of detail. So as with a lot of AGM airsoft guns, sealed, okay? So it's not even opened by the actual retailer, look. Sealed, so let's get it open. I tell you what, that looks good, looks really good. But let's go through the accessories before we get to the main attraction itself. So we get a standard 8.4 battery pack. And as always, there's a charger for that battery pack, but I never use these, so goodbye. We've got a strap or a sling, if you like. Yeah. As per usual, the actual material itself that's used, pretty good. But unfortunately, these hooks, I, I really wouldn't trust these. So I'd get myself a decent sling. Oh, and look, yet another speed loader. Free BBs. Now this looks very familiar. Remember when I unboxed this Sten right here, I said you can actually use the mag from the Sten in the MP40, or the mag from the MP40 in the Sten, well, look, it's the same exact mag. And now, for the main piece itself. Oh, hang on. Oh, that was an unjamming rod, by the way. You can also use it as a cleaning rod. Now, would you look at this? It absolutely looks just like the real thing. Even down to the brown section right here, it simulates the Bakelite that was actually used on the real steel. Although it looks like wood, it's actually meant to be a representation of the said Bakelite. This really does look the business. It was at that moment I noticed something was wrong. That's where the fire selector switch should be. And guess what was rattling around in the box at the bottom? Said fire selector switch with a spring and a missing screw. Uh, hello? So once again, I received a faulty and broken airsoft gun. But this time, I'm not going to go through the whole video just to show you the thing not working because I can see straight away the thing's broken. It may fire, but at the end of the day, it's broken. So I sent it back, ordered it from a different company. I've received it, so let's go again. <laughs> <laughs> so, the perils of ordering airsoft gear online. So the first thing I need to do is to get this mag in because I really want to complete that picture of how authentic this thing looks. Apart from one little detail right there. I'll get into that very shortly. What I want to do first is just go through the external features of this thing in terms of how it looks. Now, it is almost a fully metal airsoft submachine gun. However, this portion right here and on the actual sides of the grips, this is some form of plastic. It's made to replicate Bakelite. Not wood, Bakelite. And it really goes well in matching what I already have in terms of airsoft replicas from the video game Call of Duty World War II, which of course in turn is representing the weapons as used in World War II itself. 
Now, if I'm being honest, if I show you the other side of this thing, this more looks like the real deal than this side. And that brings me right back to this fire selector switch. On the real steel, full auto only. On this Airsoft AEG version, semi-auto and full auto. And I'll show you that in action later in the video. Another great feature of this piece is its weight. It's not light at all. It comes in at around seven pounds, so it's got a good weight to it, not a million miles different to the real steel. And it has a whole lot of metal going on. <laughs> so, your magazine, the magwell, the rear sight, the front sight, the front sling point, the rear sling point, the charging handle, your mag release, the fire selector switch, the barrel, your barrel nut, the stock. In fact, everything apart from this representation of Bakelite is all metal. You know, one of the main reasons that I got into Airsoft is purely because I'm a collector. Some say hoarder, but I'm a collector. I do love representations of all sorts of things, not just firearms, because as you know, I'm not a fan of killing and war, but I'm absolutely fascinated with Airsoft and how they replicate the real steel and keep it all legal, depending on what country you're in. Now, let's have a look at the functionality of this stock. Is it anything like the real thing? Well, let's have a look. Right here, you have your button. Yes, that's also metal. Right here, you have your stock release. So if I press that, that releases the stock. You can then extend it fully and adjust the shoulder rest. And what I love about this shoulder rest, it clicks into place. It's not just freely swiveling backwards and forwards. So if I put it back, have a listen. Aha. So let's see how authentic this is. Usually in Airsoft, I would say, I bet you this wobbles. The real steel won't wobble. But I've been reliably informed, even on the real steel, you will get a little bit of play on the stock. So let's have a quick look. Oh yeah, look, look at the wobble on that bad boy. <laughs> but you know, it's still very functional. So let's stick to the rear portion of this MP40 and we'll go along until we get to the front showing you all the different features. Now, I've already mentioned about the stock release right here, so that's good. I've shown you that we've got a sling point right here. Okay, so sticking to the rear of this piece, we have the grip section right here. Now, because it's using some form of plastic to represent Bakelite, it's just as well, it also replicates the serrations. Because if you were to use this without gloves, I can imagine your hands slipping off of this easily if you've got sweaty palms. But, as I said, it's got serrations, so that shouldn't be an issue. However, a lot of airsofters do wear gloves. So again, not an issue. Now, if I bring you to the base of the grip, you can see a little switch. That is, of course, your safety. Now, I say, of course, as if it's on the real steel. No. For the purpose of airsoft, there's your safety switch. Then we move along to the trigger. Let's have a little feel. Okay, there's no battery in there. There's no BBs in there, so it is safe, okay? Let's just check this trigger. It feels very good. Very good. Because you know AGM are seen as the sort of middle of the road manufacturers of airsoft pieces. Um, I was expecting this trigger to be very loose and wobbly. Nah, it's got a nice feel to it. Nice bit of tension on the trigger. And it's important to note, regardless of the position of this safety switch, your trigger will still move backwards and forwards. But don't worry, if it's on safe, it will not fire regardless of what you do with the trigger. Now moving along to the rear sight, it is indeed adjustable. Now, to the fire selector switch. For airsoft, great, because a lot of sites where you do go for airsoft gameplay only allow semi-auto. We all know that MP40 is a full auto submachine gun in the real world. So on this airsoft version, it's full auto and semi-auto. At this point, let me show you the other side of this AGM MP40, just in case you're wondering why I'm only concentrating on the other side, because Nothing to see here. Move along. 
So back to this side. And we get to, let's see what's next in order. It would be this dial at the base of the MP40. Now, just like the real steel, and this is what I love about a lot of Airsoft replicas, they do their best to make it look or feel or function like the real steel. So with this, just like its real counterpart, you would pull this out partially, turn it partially, and then you will start to strip your MP40. But of course, this is Airsoft. So apart from starting to strip this piece, you would also do that to insert and remove your battery pack. So at this point, I'd like to point out if you're gonna strip this thing or indeed insert or remove your battery, your stock needs to be extended and out of the way. And of course, whether it's real or not, safe practice is to remove the mag. Look at that. Just like the real steel. So it's a great opportunity right now for me to show you some of the internals. Look at that big old motor down there. Now, there's your small type Tamiya, and of course, your gearbox. Now, as I showed you earlier, you do get, depending on what country you're in, an 8.4 battery pack. Now, this particular one may not be fully charged, so I do have another one. And if you look inside this MP40, you can see you really are limited to what sort of battery pack you put in there. You will just about fit in this 8.4. I would recommend you don't really put in too much of a higher voltage battery pack. Maybe push it to 9.6, or even you can put a 7.4 volt LiPo. But for this review and test, I'm gonna stick with the 8.4. Okay, so when you're putting it back together, make sure this piece right here isn't hanging down fully, because if it is, watch, it bangs against your AEG. So just use a little finger to manipulate it up a little, and then you can bring it on home. And don't forget to put this back to its original position. Nice. Okay, let's continue along this MP40. You've got your mock charging handle right here. I say mock, it does have some sort of functionality. And you remember when I said nothing to see on the other side? Well, actually there is, because if I pull this mock charging handle back and spin it around, it opens up your mock ejection port and inside here, you would find your hop-up adjustment. It's not one of my favorite hop-up adjustment styles. It's a slidey one. I prefer the wheel, but hey, it's there and it works. Moving further along this piece, you have your metal mag well. Let me just show you inside. It's important to always put the mag in the correct way. On this full metal 50 round capacity mag, you will see where the BBs would be fed from. This hole on the top of the mag must line up with this hole in the mag well. Now, I have seen it where people have accidentally, in the heat of gameplay, ran this mag in the MP40 with this hole not lined up with the hole in the mag well. And naturally, not only did the AEG not fire, the mag also got stuck. And they had to force it out, and the top of the mag came loose, the spring and everything went everywhere. So always remember, this hole on the top of the mag should always be closest to you. Now that's assuming you're holding the gun with the barrel pointing away from you, which should always be the case. I shouldn't have to say that, but sometimes, you know, you're messing about with your AEG and you've got it pointing the other way, then my rule doesn't count. So let me give you that rule another way. The hole on the top of the mag should always be facing towards your trigger. So as we move along this AGM MP40, we get to your front sling point and your barrel nut, which actually is tight, but you can loosen it. So if you ever get one of these bad boys and you notice that your sling point is a bit loose, just tighten her up. Nice. Right, let me just fold the stock. I <laughs> love that. And look, it stays in place. And now we come to the business end. You have your front sight, 
And as we stay at the business end, take a look at this. I can literally unscrew this, which will reveal, I'm getting there, hang on, <laughs> stay with me, a threaded barrel. Super nice. Right, let's make sure this does work. As I said, when this replacement came, I quickly slapped a battery in there, pulled the trigger just to make sure, <laughs> and it did go clack. So I'm pretty confident it will fire. I have not fired it since I've tested it. So here we go. Should work, unless there's a fault with the battery. I'm gonna dry fire. Don't normally dry fire, but I've got to test this on camera. Oh, lovely clack. And what I'd like to do now is to test it on full auto because Pulling your finger, holding it down and hearing one clack is not an MP40. <laughs> so, exclusively to this Airsoft version, it's got full auto. Oh, that is music to my ears. <laughs> Let's take it to the range. Right then. Time for me to send a couple of BBs down range <laughs> with this airsoft version of the German MP40. Now, as I've become a bit more responsible and stopped wasting paper unnecessarily, I am reusing a paper target that I've used before. So these are from a different shooting test. I'm going to be concentrating on target three and target four. Now, as this is supposed to be a representation of the MP40, I should really only test it in full auto, but I'm not. This is airsoft, and more often than not, you will have to use this in semi-auto mode only during gameplay. So I'll do both. So what I'll do is I'll concentrate on three, semi-auto only, four, full auto. So now take note of the distance and what ammo I'll be using. And take note how small these targets are. That's the end of my finger touching the target. Look how tiny that is. Let's do this. <laughs> anyway, now I'm going to go full auto on number four. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> uh. Oh! <laughs> Absolutely loving the results right here. I was not expecting this at all. So if you look at number three first, and then I'll tell you what went wrong slightly for me on number four. It speaks for itself. Almost every shot within that tiny target, one or two just outside the edge, but look at that, totally destroyed the center. So I can't even compare <laughs> where each shot went. It just took it all out. Excellent. Now on target number four, I'm not even gonna pretend with you. I could have done some fancy editing to make it look slick, but nah, I've been doing this now for what, a couple of years, this YouTube thing, a couple of years or so, and um, it's all about being honest <laughs> and being straight with you. So what happened was, I was firing at this thing with the MP40 still in semi-auto, and I was thinking, what's going on here? It's not going into full auto, and then I forgot. This Airsoft version that I showed you earlier has a fire selector switch. <laughs> so once I got it into full auto, destruction. And I love that. Accuracy, I can't fault it. Yes, I wasn't a million miles away. You know, about, what was it? About 40 feet or so away. But come on, excellent. So just to confirm, when this fire selector switch is pointing towards you, full auto pointing up in the air, semi-auto, your single shots. Right, let's chrono this bad boy.
So there you go, that's a pretty decent result. I do see some websites saying that this only has uh, 270 FPS. Some say 350, some say 330. I've got a happy medium right here. I'll put that at around 310, 315 FPS. Right, so let's go full auto. Oh, that sounded a bit more sweeter <laughs> than when I first tested the full auto. That's on a fairly fully charged battery pack. We're looking at mm, closer to 13 rounds per second. 12.7 <laughs> to be exact. So what's my verdict on this AGM MP40? Well, I like it. What pros do I have? Well, the pros are numerous. Apart from one or two finer details, <laughs> like that fire selector switch, and maybe one other thing, it pretty much looks like the real steel. The one thing I would have preferred, here's a con, let me just spin it around. The one thing I would have preferred is if it had blowback action. This is the AGM MP40. I'm Ace Off Mike. Catch me next time. And would you like a clue as to what my next video will be? Well, it's gonna be an officially licensed product. Should I give you a clue? Nah, I'm not gonna give you a clue. Why should I? Don't. Ha <laughs> ha!